Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is uh, Rafael Grossi. He's the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Thank you very much for My being pleasure. with us. My pleasure. Pleasure to be here. The agency is based in Vienna. Vienna is where uh, the talks between uh, three European countries, Russia and China on the one side, and Iran on the other side, have just uh, restarted. The U.S. is obviously uh, watching this uh, very closely and participating indirectly. Uh, the mood is uh, pretty uh, gloomy, I must say. Uh, the Iranians said they want to reach a deal. Do you think a deal is possible? Because it's a complicated issue, obviously. Uh, it is. It is a complex issue. I think a deal is always possible, provided the political will is there. The, the, I, I would say the good thing is that they are not starting from scratch, they had already six rounds of talks. This will be the seventh. So there is a lot of work that has taken place from the beginning of the year until now. They've been talking about uh, several nuclear specific uh, things, including some technical uh, matters. And then there is the political discussion about the sanctions and all of that. That is not my um, my, my job. But uh, I can say that the, the uh, lots of elements are, are there and an agreement would be possible if, of course, they want to do it. Right, uh, because obviously, uh, let's remind our viewers, uh, the Trump administration pulled out of the agreement in 2018. Yes. Uh, the Biden administration restarted uh, talks, uh, and the Europeans as well, uh, with the Iranians. But since then, there's been a, also a new uh, administration in Iran. And so it's the first time uh, that they are meeting. And there was some concern that the Iranians hardline Iranians, let's put it this way, would arrive at the table and say, you know, what was done before, we throw it uh, in the dustbin and we start from scratch. From what you're hearing out of Vienna, this is not what is happening. It seems it, it, it is not the case. I think they are, they are trying to build on what was done uh, before. Um, but of course, it's up to the negotiators. We are in this thing. We are uh, following closely. You know, the IEA is not a party to the JCPOA. We are the inspectors. We are the guarantors of whatever may be agreed or not. So we, we are following it very closely. Uh, so we hope they can come to, to an agreement soon. It must be soon. Soon, uh, within months or weeks. We don't know. Um, obviously, the problem is that the previous agreement dates back to 2015. And yes. a lot of things happen, especially, yes. uh, and obviously the agency knows this better than anyone else, Iran has developed its nuclear uh, program. So many uh, players, including uh, the lead uh, US negotiators, have said was well, going to be very uh, difficult to bring back to life what is essentially a dead body in speaking of the it 2015 is, I mean, the, agreement. It is partly true in the sense that there's been some water under the breach in terms of more material that has been enriched, in, term, in terms of new generation of uh, um, centrifuges that are, opera are, that are spinning now, um, as opposed to what was the case in 2015 with, with different models that were less efficient, less, less, less um, uh, fast, uh, not, not, not so fast. So there, there have been some, some changes, but what one should um, recognize is that so far, at least, uh, both sides, if I can put it like that, although there are many sides to this, um, are talking about a return to the original uh, agreement. So that is their uh, political uh, goal. Right, because some are saying a more realistic option would be an interim agreement, where essentially Iran would halt or slow its uranium enrichment in exchange for a partial lifting of sanctions. I mean, would this be at least something uh, that both sides could hang on to while they're negotiating a bigger, deeper agreement? This is not what I hear from, from, from them, as I say. And I believe the Iranian government has very firm on requesting and, and more than requesting and demanding uh, a return to the, to the agreement in full, including for them, of course, the rewards that were expecting, expected from the original agreement in terms of financial flows and, and access to markets and, and uh, a number of uh, incentives, uh, if you wish. Uh, uh, Israel reportedly shared intelligence with its allies, the U.S. and Europeans, saying that Iran was enriching uranium at 90 percent. 90 percent is weapons-grade uranium. Uh, you only do this if you want to do uh, weapons. 
Are you privy to this intelligence? No, we don't have this information. And of course, uh, one has to uh, remind that the only on-site presence is our presence, the presence of the IEA So that's inspectors. not true, what the Israel and, uh, is saying? No, there's no, reportedly there, saying? There's no, there's no um, 90% enrichment at the moment in the Islamic Republic of Iran. You have enrichment at 5%, you have enrichment at 20%, you have enrichment at 60%, which, mind you, it is pretty high. And one could even argue that between 60% and 90%, it's only a few steps. Uh, so uh, there is some concern there. But uh, we don't have any information about 90% enrichment. Okay, let's go back to 60%. Yes. Why would Iran en enrich uranium at 60%? They're saying it's not for military means, uh, but you seem to well, think you know, that uh, that would be the only logical reason for that. I don't know. As an inspector, I don't judge intentions. I, I you judge facts. That's uh, a facts. worrying fact. And no? for, for me, facts are amounts and levels which uh, are not limited. The JCPOA had a limit at 3.67. 3.67, now we are at 60%. Okay. But that was the JCPOA, and the JCPOA was abandoned. Right. Uh, there's also a, a new IAA report from this Wednesday about an enrichment plant known as a Fordo, uh, which is uh, hi was hidden in, in a mountain for uh, until it was uh, discovered uh, that Iran is uh, essentially enriching uranium at 20%, I believe, but they're stepping up their production. Yes. I guess that's not a very good sign if they're doing this while there are negotiations in Vienna. Well, um, indeed it is correct. Today I issued a report uh, in Vienna confirming that Iran has uh, um, increased the production capacity at this particular uh, facility in Fordo, as you say, which um, in, in concrete terms allows them to you know, go uh, much faster and, and, and increase the volumes significantly. So it's worrying. Uh, well, I would say it's a sign, but it is up it's to... It's not a good sign. Uh, it is up to the negotiators to say that. Uh, I, as an inspector, have to remain neutral. But, as I say, uh, I think it is very important very important that, in particular, because Iran has this degree of ambition in terms of all these nuclear activities that they are exercising at the moment, that they should give unfettered access to my inspectors. If they limit our access, then we do have a problem. So you are essentially requesting more access to Indeed. this particular plant because of the stepped-up production. To this and to other places as well. Right. We, we, we had an agreement to maintain certain activities uh, which, was, which were agreed with them. I don't want to get into too technical detail, but um, that, that has not been complied with by, right. by Iran. We have been discussing that. I was in Tehran just a few days ago and I had... A Inconclusive talks. Inconclusive talks. This is the way I described it, because I don't want to. Not very promising. I don't want to. I don't want to draw a line. I think there is there is still a possibility, uh, and I had a good conversation, I would say, with uh, Foreign Minister Amir Abdullahian. Um, but you're not there to have good conversations. You're there to reach a deal. Indeed, indeed. So I hope we'll be able to do that. Are you planning to go back to Tehran? To If they invite me, I will go in a minute. Right. Do you think that's their intentions, that they are uh, really... I hope it is. I saw uh, messages, public messages from His Excellency, the Foreign Minister, saying that he believes it's a matter of a couple of words. If that is the case, I can go uh, very, very fast and we can have a very quick agreement, which will at, at least, let's not um, exaggerate uh, either, which would at least uh, give us the minimum access and observation capacities to uh, maintain uh, an acceptable level of inspection. Right. I mean, one site that's been problematic, it's a, a, a site where they uh, produce parts for centrifuges, a place called Karaj. Uh, you had uh, monitoring devices, cameras. Uh, they have been shut off after what Iran says, uh, sabotage operation, presumably uh, by Israel in their eyes. Uh, you had a deal to essentially be able to reaccess, uh, but that's not happening. That's, that's not, very that's not happening. Like you say, they, they argue that the, there was an act of sabotage. Of course, uh, we condemn sabotage they hinted and, and that violence. The, I, the IAEA might have been... 
you party know, to that act of sabotage. Well, that would be absurd, really. To to uh, how can one fathom that an international uh, organization like the IEA would be uh, in connivance with a third state to attack another member state? It's absurd. It's so absurd that uh, you know I don't even want to remember that they are saying this. But hopefully, this will be behind. We'll be able to sit down again soon, very soon, and have this agreement, which is so necessary. It is necessary also uh, to uh, encourage or send a good signal to Vienna, because obviously the negotiators are probably watching what you're doing with the Iranians to see if my there can be some confidence-building measures. My impression is that it is uh, indispensable, because uh, how can you get into an agreement if you don't have an idea of the facts? And this is what we've been telling everybody, including Iran, telling them this is in your own interest. Right now, the agency is blind on the Iran nuclear program. It's not program, completely blind, but, but we, are, we are flying among clouds, as I said. And, and, it's, and we are not seeing as good as we should. Are you ready to eventually say we don't see anything anymore? If that happens, it's not readiness. It's my duty to say that I don't have the access that I need. When is the deadline for that? Soon. Very soon? Soon. Rafael Grossi, I want to thank you very much uh, for appearing here on the Friends 24 interview, and thank you very much for watching it.